The problem is show wide. There's nothing, you know, their next week is AEW Arthur Ashe stadium, right? I'll, 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 I'll hang with you there. I'll I think it, it is. I think it's coming up this next week. Samoa Joe, MJF, some other stuff. Two years ago, AEW, we talked about it on the air. It felt so hot. Punk came in. Whatever drama happened, Punk gave us a year of highlights on that show. We knew no matter how bad it was, his segment was typically going to be really good. Danielson came in, and that has been a disappointing run because they really never got like an extended multi-month great run out of Danielson. There's been a lot of starts and stops. And he doesn't mean today what he meant a few years ago, I don't think. If, he, if he's in the group for any other reason than, than to hide physical shortcomings in wrestling and having a focus put on him as a single, which we could all understand is health. If, if there's any other reason than that, they've just buried him in a fucking group of goofs. But they're running out of talent they can get. You know, CM Punk and Danielson were the two biggest free agents that had been out there in a long time. It wasn't like they were just another couple of free agents. They were big. There aren't those guys anymore. It's the same people on the shows that were on the shows two years ago. There's not a lot of change. MJF as a babyface is one of the few fresh things they have in that company. Everything else is stale. It's becoming like, you know, Gunkel in 74. It's the same roster. Just, <laughs> no, because they ran out of talent. There was well, nowhere no, else I, to I, get that's talent. That's why I laughed, because it, it's, it's it, exactly the same people as two years ago we're seeing every fucking week because we can't get any more. They've cut off our talent. And only in this case, nobody's cut it off. There is none. They spent a couple of years building up Jay Cargill. She loses one match, then apparently makes a deal with WWE or <laughs> thinks she's about to, comes back, loses a match on Rampage. So you don't even get anything out of her losing the match. You put her on the show that no one watches. You spent two years building her up on TV. She lost a match on pay-per-view, barely got mentioned after that, then shows up again, and you have her lose on the way out to one of your champions in a position that it should make her look good on the show that no one watches. On the least watched program. They're going to have a lot of problems, you know? MJF, whenever that contract really comes up, that's exactly the kind of guy WWE and specifically Endeavor want working for WWE. And AEW has not been able to calm the chaos, the behind the scenes drama, the childishness beyond the bucks and all that. Like just the childishness in the office. And I think they can survive as long as they want because of Tony and because they'll be able to get some numbers and they'll be able to get a rights fee. But the shows are becoming tougher and tougher to watch, even for some of us who, when things were bad, found things to laugh at and enjoy. It's becoming tougher and tougher to watch. Well, and, and here's the thing, again, as you mentioned, who's out there and who the WWE might be looking for in the future. And th there's the AEW fans, I'm sure, think you can bring El Hijo del Vikingo uh, it or some other indie darling or, you know, somebody from some small organization that we've never heard of before that can do flips and that'll be brand new stars. See action and ready. But the fact is there's not on a major worldwide stage now or ready for one, you know, the answer to anybody's problems that's going to be available anytime soon contractually that, that we can, and that's why the people that say, oh, well, we don't know if the WWE will take CM Punk back. If CM Punk wants to go back to wrestling, they will take him. Because who else in the world right now or for the next year contractually would make a bigger difference in WWE's business than CM Punk. And how hot was Cody in AEW when he goes there and it's a whole new world? Punk was the same thing. It, it only probably more magnified because he's more controversial. He's gotten more attention in the period of time leading up to his potential debut there, whenever that may take place. In that people are interested because they now they don't know what to think about him. 
he's uh, look, is he a loose cannon is he fucking nuts what the fuck's gonna happen and for the people who don't live their life on the internet he's been away from wrestling for nine years now not seven and they're, they're gonna fucking blow a gasket to see him back you know i said it as a joke a few months back but it's true i think i said SummerSlam. we can now change that the biggest match in aew history is cm punk versus cody rhodes and uh, I guess I guess technically Cody can't go for the real world championship, right? Because he <laughs> early on at AEW said he never would. But that's the biggest thing. And if Cody gets off course with Roman because of The Rock, and we'll see what happens. Ooh. Punk and Cody, if they gave it time and they let it, let these guys promo each other. Oh my God, it would be incredible. And that's the problem. Punk is still the guy from AEW everyone's talking about. And he's not even there anymore. And more than likely, he's not going back. AEW has nothing really happening right now. And they're killing their live crowds for everyone who was like, oh, Wembley, Wembley, Wembley. What about Cincinnati? <laughs> like, they can't get anyone to go to their live shows. I remember Cincinnati. It was one of our great towns. See, you and me will disagree on one thing because it's kind of a weird paper. I think you will. But like Zack Sabre Jr. versus Danielson, I'm all for putting that on the pay-per-view. There are fans... Who, if that match happened, they would immediately want to go out of their way and find that match. Is it 100,000 fans? I don't know. But they'll pay to see that match. Put it on pay-per-view. Fine. But the week-to-week -week TVs to build up to any of this stuff is bad. And you can't just have pay-per-views of dream matches. Because eventually, you're going to run out of those. And well, AEW's pay-per-views are still built around, like, dream matches. And WWE's pay-per-views are built around personalities and events. That, that's what I said the other day is that, you know, Tony's a matchmaker. He's not a booker because a matchmaker writes down this guy versus this guy, but a booker gives them reason to have a conflict and, and a backstory that people can follow along and who's going to get even with who or gain what or whatever. That's the booking. But again, with... <sighs> I wouldn't mind Brian Danielson and Zack Sabre Jr. being on pay-per-view either in concept, except that when they're, they've just spit out two pay-per-views uh, within a week of each other, they're talking about one for four weeks after the last one, they've just fired their biggest pay-per-view draw, not just anecdotally, but historically, by the metrics, by the measurements, Punk has main evented their biggest pay-per-views. They've just fired him. And Danielson is, again, one of the upper echelon of the talent they've got there right now. And instead of being in something possibly important to draw the fucking pay-per-view buys from the general population of AEW fans, he's going for the really most devoted that want to see that dream match for absolutely no reason from a guy that we've seen on TV twice rather than Brian Danielson and fucking MJF and a goddamn dance off. I don't know. Intermix your top talent with your main fucking roster. When you're trying to draw this many pay-per-view buys in this goddamn short period of time. And the people might be interested in the personalities if they see him on TV every fucking week. Does that make any sense? It makes sense. That's why AEW doesn't do it. 